the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. You see, let's, let's learn to respect the sacrifices that people go through to attain onto the level of stature and stamina that we celebrate. It's more than just the man. This is a representation of years of pain, mistakes, learning, impartations, mentorship, diligence, all put together. It is my prayer that you will place value on your pastor, the leadership, and then the revelation that you receive. Most people celebrate, oh, we're happy, preach, preacher, wow, this is wonderful. We even cry. And two, three days down the line, it's gone. And the Bible lets us know that every time what is given to you is not found, someone took it. And the enemy, he comes to church too. His assignment starts when the word is deposited. If the word is not deposited, he has nothing to do with you. As soon as the word is planted, his ministry is ignited. He finds the precious seeds and picks them first. Because whoever bears precious seeds, there is a prophecy that doubtless you will return rejoicing, bringing the sheaves. So the way he kills your joy is to take away the precious seeds. So that there is no joy, there is no returning. Father, we are gathered here tonight. It's an honor to bring your word. Thank you for Pastor Godwin. Thank you for this beautiful family of faith. Here present. And as many who are following, connecting from around the world. Remains an honor to bring your truth to the body. I pray in the name of Jesus. That the truths that will come from this altar may they sustain the power to liberate like pastor prophesied i pray that this would be the beginning of a new season financially take your people to tremendous realms of abundance realms of rest we pray this and we declare that you forever be glorified in jesus name pastor again thank you for the honor Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. So we'll spend a few minutes tonight and then we'll trust God to finish up my session tomorrow. And like Pastor said, there are several other people that will be coming. Let's just pay attention, get the truths, buy the tapes, listen to them, and the Lord will grant us grace in Jesus' name. Please write down three things lack of financial resources have cost in your life and your family. Three things you can remember. I apologize for any emotional, uh, any, any pain that the memory of that may cause you. But I want you to write down if you can remember three things you remember lack of finances doing to you, to your family. there is a reason why I ask that we do that just three that you can remember for some of you lack of finances program delay in your life for some of you lack of finances made prophecy look like a lie for some of you lack of finances destroyed valuable relationships 
multiplied pain. I want you to look at what you've written very carefully. This is church, but I want us to pay attention. Just look at what you've written very carefully. You can make a choice to allow what you've written repeat itself again many times in your lifetime. Or you can make a decision in this conference that the last time it happened would be the last time it will ever happen. What you just did is called the law of recognition. It is vain to supply information where the awareness of its value and its need is not there. So the first assignment is to create an awareness of what the absence of that information has brought. Then on the strength of that desperation and that awareness, value would be placed on the information. Most times, when believers are taught on the matters of the kingdom, doesn't matter what aspect of the kingdom life, usually um, we don't place value because we are not given an opportunity to see what will happen to our lives in the absence of that body of truth. This was the challenge with the prodigal son. He never saw what poverty looked like. He grew up in a realm of abundance and so he did not place value on knowledge authority and all of these traits and life would teach him a lesson and the lesson started when he departed from his father's house the bible says for a while he would boastfully think he was still in control of his life and to his shock he began to deteriorate and got to a point where he was feeding with the swine. Now that's a, that's a very dilapidating state. For one who had everything at his beck and call. And now he's with the swine. And then the miracle happened. The miracle never happened in the house. One day the Bible says he came to himself. Now that statement right there is a big miracle. He came to himself. God didn't speak to him. A demon didn't speak to him. His will finally came alive. His consciousness finally came alive. And here's what he said. He said, how many hired servants? Now there is a basis for contrast. How many hired servants does my father have? And I am here feeding with the swine. And finally his pride was broken and he said, I will arise. I will swallow my pride. Now I have seen the excellency of living under the covering of my father. He says, I will go to my father. And when I meet him, I will say, Father, I have seen. You don't have to tell me. I'm now aware that I have seen against you and against heaven. I am not worthy. Now I place value on sonship. While I was in your house, I didn't place value on it because it was an inheritance. So now I've been given an opportunity to taste what it means to be outside the fold, the covering of a father. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. The moment the lesson was learned, he was restored back. Then the elder brother was about to make the same mistake. You know, two of them committed the same sin. The difference is that one acted out his own. The other was still nursing his own. The prodigal son is about two scenarios representing the same thing. Oftentimes we think the one who left was the one who was wrong no the elder brother had his own if the story continued there would be another version of disobedience too when the father celebrated the son the elder brother came and said okay it's time for me to talk i have been here under your covering i've not acted out anything and yet you have not given me anything to celebrate with my friend and the father said everything that i have you are looking for the same thing he wanted. In this kingdom, there are no owners. We are not given ownership. Owners are rebels. We are only given access. Rebellion seeks ownership. Ownership means in your name. Are we together? You may freely eat of all the trees, but it's not your own. I'm already going ahead of myself. This is one of the fundamental laws of kingdom wealth. We do not own anything. We are only given access. If you do not own it, that means it is not 
there are many burdens that come upon owners and the moment you save yourself the burden of ownership you can find rest my child my business of course in terms of administration and leadership it is yours but as far as being in god's kingdom is concerned owners are rebels the earth is the lord's and its fullness the resources the walls the systems and even them these four categories they all belong to one person the lord whoever claims that lordship is a rebel this already is a very big revelation when the business is yours you will fund it when the children are yours you will raise them the prodigal son made that mistake he had access but he wanted ownership he was embarrassed that he would have to depend on his father all the time he wanted it in his name luck started the moment ownership started give me my share the day they gave him he started going down when he returned back to access abundance was there again the subject of wealth and prosperity pastor is one that i think respectfully speaking i think it may be one of the most controversial subjects in the body of christ every time we mention the word rich prosper wealth money there's such a a negative atmosphere that just rises even from the most well-meaning believers is as though it does something to them please listen carefully and so we have such we have such divide along this subject there are people for instance who frown and vocally propose that a life of mediocrity a life that is that does not have the blessing of god that that is such a template for a believer and they support it with scripture there are people who are obsessed about wealth everything their entire life is surrounded by money everything is money they will throw away jesus a thousand times to keep money you see and so because of this i think there has been most preachers do not want to talk about the subject of money even though they know that a good shepherd would have to train and teach and mentor his people along that lines but the pain the backlash the trouble the controversies that surround this area most people will just leave it silent and hope that people will find their way just figure out their way so it takes a lot of love and courage from a man of god like your pastor to boldly come up and say you know what I am willing to make sure that you learn these principles to stop shadow boxing. I am showing you the pathway designed by God. I'm unveiling to you the economic system of the kingdom. Are we together now? Yes, sir. So I want us to discuss a few thoughts tonight and then we'll pray. I confess to you that there's so much like your pastor i believe would have taught you here and would have told you there is so much around the subject of finance that in truth not even a month can exhaust it there are many dimensions to it and the goal is not to do everything but just to select a few vitals since i'm laying the foundation to just trust god for grace as other servants of god come to build all to the end that we become empowered but i pray for you in the name of jesus that through this conference you will reject poverty that once and for all you will wave it goodbye and insist that it waves you back in the name of jesus christ so pray for one minute whilst you are sitting lord my heart is opened my understanding is fruitful in the name of jesus is someone praying pray it from the depth of your heart 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Make sure you are praying. Grant us grace, O God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Just two scriptures and then we'll begin to build first chronicles chapter 29 please first chronicles chapter 29 first chronicles chapter 29 from verse 11 first chronicles 29 and verse 11 Let's just have KJV. Please look up and we'll read it together. Ready? Please read. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Uh -huh. For all that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Reading to 13, 12. Both riches and honor come of thee and thou reignest over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand it is to make great ah, please keep this scripture look at what you are reading carefully that both riches and honor come from you and that in your hand you reign over all in your hand is Power. Remember Deuteronomy 8.18. In your hand is power. And then it says it is within your power to make great. Both riches and honor come from you. I'll be teaching very briefly on the laws of kingdom wealth and abundance. The laws of kingdom wealth and abundance. And as a foundation... There are certain things that we must know and we must understand about wealth and abundance. One of it is that all blessings come from God. Please write it down. All blessings come from God. All blessings come from God. Number two, the second thing I want you to write down, please, is that all blessings belong to God. This is very important. They look very simple and basic, but we're laying a foundation. All blessings come from God. Number two, all blessings belong to God. He is owner, he is master, he is Lord over all, this, the Bible says. All blessings come from God. All blessings belong to God. Number three, the third foundation that we need to write is all blessings come to men through men. All blessings come to men through men. So number one, that all blessings come from God. There's no confusion as to who makes rich, God. Number two, that all blessings belong to him. Remember the concept of stewardship. We are not owners in this kingdom. It is lack of ownership that gives you rest even in the midst of abundance. If I am a steward, then moreover it is required in steward, the Bible declares, that a man be found faithful. So if this belongs to him, the day he makes demand, I should release it with all joy because I am a privileged steward. When I become an owner, I can negotiate. All blessings come from God. They belong to God, but they come to men through men. Are we blessed? 
let's define a few things very quickly what does it mean to prosper the word prosper means to do well please write it down again the word prosper means to do well you are living in prosperity to the degree to which you are doing well it does not necessarily talk about finances not at all in fact as you'll be learning financial prosperity is only one of the dimensions of prosperity hallelujah there are five dimensions to prosperity maybe i'll just list them quickly sorry we may not have the time to deal with them so we can talk about other things but there are five dimensions to prosperity and in the kingdom even if you have four over five you still fail you must have all five to be considered prosperous ready number one spiritual prosperity the first dimension of prosperity i just want to touch on them very briefly the first dimension of prosperity is called spiritual prosperity the prosperity of your soul your relationship with the lord jesus christ no matter what else you have if you do not have spiritual prosperity you are terribly bankrupt this is the advantage we have ignorant people will look at those in the world and say they are better off than those in the body of christ because they have all kinds of things and the question i'm asking you is have you sat down with them to know other things that they do not have let me tell you one of the treasures of spiritual prosperity is peace you will never buy peace in the market you will show me a mall that sells peace show me a hospital that has peace like a blood bank to sell show me a school that can award peace like a degree he said peace i live with you my peace i give unto you not as the world gives let me tell you the truth many people who are blessed without god do not have this treasure of peace they live in fear they live in doubt the higher they rise the more the troubles in their lives they suspect everyone they can't sleep they get to a point where they tell their wife you know what i know we are married but based on the lecture i received you start sleeping in another room right now because my financial advisor said don't trust anybody what a life and just because of the presence of things around them we believe they are better than us believers you have to know the treasure you have one of it is peace that you can sit in the midst of a storm and smile as if nothing is happening a state of rest are we together now the kind of blessing the kind of prosperity that comes with sorrow is, is not needed in your life many people spend their lifetime accumulating resources trying to hustle and push through and by the time they really become wealthy the world's way their health is deteriorated their lives their family every other thing aside finances has died that was the price they paid to be rich then they now begin to use wealth to regain everything they lost that's how they spend their life that's not a wise life spiritual prosperity that you get to a point where in the midst of the influence and all the millions you still have peace with god you know that in the midst of all these things my hope is not just in this life the bible says that if our hope is only in this life we are of all men most miserable most of these people fear death you know why because they are not sure they will be in control after now they are used to control they are used to honor they don't know what it will look like after now but there is rest and certainty we are victorious both in this life and better when we are out of this place is a state of rest spiritual prosperity number two very quickly the second dimension of prosperity that we need in this kingdom is called mental prosperity the soundness of your mind mental prosperity ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 Paul was teaching the church in Ephesus and he had this to say having their understanding darkened he said 
being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. He says, because of the blindness of their heart or their mind. So Satan has an assignment that he can blind the minds of people and make your understanding unfruitful. Let me tell you, you are prosperous to the degree to which you sustain superior belief systems. Belief systems that are beyond the realm of culture, beyond your sociological context. Renewal and transformation is wealth. I hope that we'll have the time to deal with one of the spiritual laws or one of the laws of wealth and abundance. And then you will learn that true wealth is not pursued. If you find yourself pursuing money, you've missed it already. You will never find it. Are we together? That the moment you find yourself looking for or pursuing wealth, you've started a journey that will never be complete. That there is a technology in the spirit that brings these things. Listen to me. Give a madman one billion, you didn't bless him and he will not bless you. Why? There's nothing wrong with the money you gave him. There's nothing wrong with his body. There's everything wrong with his mind. Mental prosperity is real prosperity. Mental prosperity is real prosperity. Do you know why the mentorship, sir, the reason why in Africa we are not able to reproduce wealthy people is because most people did not become wealthy by following the pathway to wealth. Their mindsets were not re renewed to match the level of wealth that they stole or accumulated. So they can't defend it through their transformation. It's difficult. So if, if you say rich people stand here, they will stand because of what their bank balance is saying. But now when you ask them to speak, their understanding betrays their results. They did not get it by knowledge. They got it either by stealing respectfully speaking or by some blind inheritance. Is the reason why we don't perpetuate wealth in Africa. The Jewish people made it as a point of duty. Before you see one shekel, one naira, there is a body of knowledge that must recalibrate your thinking. In fact, if all you were given in Jewish days were physical things, it was proof that your father did not consider you great. If you were considered great, you were not given physical things. That means if your father gave you physical things as a gift, it's proof that you are other children. Are you learning something? Listen to me. The journey to transformation is real wealth. In fact, in fact, in fact, this is one of the grandest, second only to your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. This should be your primary assignment to contend for transformation. Years ago, I, I remember this story now to my shame. Years ago, I wanted to know the secret behind very wealthy people. And every time I got materials, all they were talking about was belief systems and traits. And I felt they were very wicked and unfair. What business are you doing for God's sake? What are you selling? What are you buying? Don't tell me behave well, understand honor, understand relationships. What do I, I mean, we have, we have, this is Africa. We have serious issues. What time do I have to learn? Really? Imagine that you meet me and I tell you, I'm on a journey to prosperity. So what are you doing now? I'm learning on relationships. <sighs> Your father will look at you and say, much learning makes thee mad. But how foolish I was. They were giving their best. If we have time, by the grace of God, we'll discuss true riches. The capital that buys money. That money itself is a product. The name of the capital that buys that product is true riches. And that may you never be so poor that all you have is money. If all you have is money, a day will come where everybody around you has the same thing. At that point, your relevance climaxes and you will never go beyond that realm. You can only use money when there are people around you who need it. But you will get to a realm where nobody around you needs money. You will need to bring another kind of currency. 
many people never get blessed enough to get to that realm so their entire theology of wealth is just cash but believe me there is a realm where money does not matter because everybody there has it you don't sell air because it's available So if you have a business that you're selling air, I don't mean the one in the hospital, just air to people who are alive and wealthy. You have to bring another kind of product. Hallelujah. There are seven currencies that we use to transact with in this life. The least of them is money, as you know. So I pray that God will grant us grace and will discuss it. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that when you leave church, you can leave church, even though trekking, you'll be laughing like a madman. And ignorant people will say, something has happened to you. Have you gotten the job and you say, I wouldn't love this much if all I got was a job. I've gotten what is greater than a job. I've gotten the capital that buys money. You believe what I'm telling you? Listen, you will walk out of this conference and you wonder the ignorance of the people on the street based on what, and to know you were like that before you came to church, you would thank God for church for the rest of your life. Now you will understand what it means when the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. There is something in the house of the Lord that is not found anywhere else. This is what the Bible calls the power to prosper. God gives you the capital that buys money and says go and he's sure that you will return back rejoicing and you will play life like a chess and you watch men and women pay for their ignorance and you will thank God for God you will thank God for your pastor you will thank God for your leaders and you will quickly gather your children to say I found something let me show you there is a key mommy when are we going to get the money and you say no i don't hate you that much let me teach you what is better than money that brings you money through riches never forget this just the title alone can bless you the capital that buys money money is a product there is capital that buys it but that's not even where we're going can you imagine we are still defining terms? This is spiritual prosperity, then mental prosperity. The third level of prosperity is called bodily prosperity. Your health and your physical well-being. Your health and your physical well-being. Your health and your physical well-being. Health is wealth. It's a true statement. Health is wealth. There are millionaires and billionaires today whose money cannot do them much because their health is so deteriorated. Let me tell you this. You have a responsibility to take care of this body that your spirit lives in. The reason is because there is a requisite level of health that allows your spirit to remain in this body. If your body deteriorates beyond that level, the spirit will have to live. A body has now prepared bodies are prepared they don't just it is your responsibility to keep the body prepared so that you can do much for the kingdom this is prosperity we deteriorate our health we wake up early in the morning and we sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow and then at the end of it we are giving naira and kobo and a few dollars and pounds and then we find out that these things do not have the power. We traded, we blame Esau and Jacob, and yet we make the same mistake every day. When you give your health just for money, that's the same thing you did. Health is very important. I have the privilege to pray for people. I pray for the sick all the time. And I am amazed, Pastor, at how helpless money can look like in the money is only useful when there is a professional who can administer something about your health but when the doctors tell you i'm sorry you have a week to go you hold all the money and see how powerless and valueless money is ask a dying man what is your greatest request he will not say bank a lot give me time the gift of health extend my life 
Hezekiah said. Health is very important. If you are healthy, it is a blessing from God you should cherish. In Africa, I'm told that the lifespan is 48 years. We reject that result in the name of Jesus. But statistically speaking, that if you are 48 years in Africa, they begin to tell you, make sure your will is in place. Make sure if there's anything you need to tell your wife or your husband, tell them quickly. If there's something, if you need to reconcile, because they hope that you would not live long. Because we deteriorate our health, we deteriorate our bodies. Number four, the fourth dimension of prosperity is now called financial prosperity. That's what we now call prosperity. Can you see that's only one over four? Financial prosperity. Let me define for you what financial prosperity is. The absence of lack, the absence of poverty alongside the negative effects that come with them. Financial prosperity is the absence of lack. Is the absence of poverty. Poverty there not just meaning lack of money, but the capacity to be productive. So you are financially prosperous to the degree to which you have no lack in your life, to the degree to which you have the availability of financial resources alongside the capacity to be fruitful and to replenish. This is a word we are going to be dealing with, I hope. You are not truly wealthy if you do not know how to replenish, even if you are fruitful. Replenish is where the mastery of wealth comes from. Fear of money leaving you dies when you can replenish. Many corrupt people are not afraid of giving money because there is a corrupt system of replenishing. I can give you 10,000. I can give you 100,000 because I know how I can sign in a way that it will come back. You only fear things leaving you when you don't know how it will come back again. You know that God built our system in circles. There is the hydrogen cycle. There is the water cycle. Are we together now? Circles. There is rainy season in Nigeria, dry season. It is a system of replenishing. So you can have confidence that by this time, this will happen again. Predictability to your life. The name is called replenish. You will fear money leaving your business. You will fear money leaving your life. When you are only fruitful, it's good to be productive. But if you stop there, you may not do much. You can get to a financial equilibrium where as money is going, money is coming to the point where your harvest overtakes even your seed sowing. Replenish. May that be so for someone here. In the name of Jesus Christ. The last dimension of prosperity very quickly is called relational prosperity. Relational prosperity. Is God speaking to us already? Relational prosperity. relational prosperity what does that mean the health of your relationship be fruitful means be relational because everything multiplies on the basis of relationships everything it is your relationship with the holy spirit that provides an advantage for you in this kingdom it is your relationship with god that even secures your eternal destiny it's your relationship with the devil that destroys your life and destroys everything about you relationships are very very important at the end of your life there are things that are very important one of it is your relationships they define your possibilities in this life like pastor was sharing before i came up that i i say it this way that all blessings come from god through men to men that means that if god says yes and a man says no the yes will remain in the realm of the spirit it will never manifest as yes in your life it takes both the spirit and the bride for the word to come the spirit says prosper the bride must agree with the spirit and say prosper too otherwise prosperity will not come god can say be healed but if there is no man to administer that healing the healing will remain in the realm of the spirit you need to understand that men are very important this is the world of men now this is where church people miss it 
We believe in God. Wonderful. But we reject men to the detriment of our rising. Politicians understand this. Non-Christian, un <laughs> they understand this. You know, I always give this example. What would make a man fly from the U.S., ladies and gentlemen, and come into Nigeria, Abuja, or Lagos to celebrate the two-year-old birthday of a wealthy man's, a wealthy man's two-year-old baby? Is the baby the man's friend? Why fly a private jet? Go through that rigor. While he's flying there, people say, Sir, I'm still waiting for you. And he ignores all of them. Ask Jesus who canceled crusades to meet with certain men. He was on his way going for a crusade. And he meets a man who is a man of influence. His relationship with that man could liberate others. And he says, Zacchaeus, come down. I've changed. It's your house I'm going to. Jesus did not hide the importance of men. He would finish ministering to thousands of people. And then he will be with one person or a group of people. It's only in church that we ignore people. And we ignore them to our detriment. One man can give a recommendation. You can leverage on his influence. And your prayer point of decades can be answered in a moment. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. Is God speaking to us? Notice we are not even talking of business. We are not talking of... These are the foundational truths that we must have. So when you are saying, I am prosperous, you know what you are saying. My relationship with God is intact. I continue to contend for a superior belief system. My health and my physical well-being is all right. My finances are doing well. And then I have quality relationships. Indeed, you are prosperous. If you have four over five, you are not there. Show me those without God and grade them by this understanding. And then you see that you are admiring wrong people. Just because you saw the fourth key, the fourth dimension so lavish in their lives. Most of them are afraid. They don't know who trusts them. I mean, they don't know who to trust. They don't even know who can kill them. They live with charms. They live with all kinds of things. No, he gives his beloved sleep. If I stop here this night, believe me, you have gotten something to go back home with. So that the next time someone says, I stopped coming to church because I got a job, you tell him, ah, I grade you now. I came to church and I was taught how to grade. You are not prosperous. You only have one over four. Or I just got a grant or whatever 10 million naira i don't need anybody to teach me again everything that is not represented in your mind and is in your hand will leave you it's a law it's a spiritual law everything is built twice if it's if it appears only in your hand you only held a rubber ring you go back no matter how long it looks to stay it will go back we don't secure things in our hands. No. We secure things in our mind. So if you do not sustain the belief system that makes for a prosperous life, you will find out that as an individual, you're not doing well. As a corporate organization, you're not doing well. Even though the value that you provide is there, you will still be shocked that things are not going on well. Don't worry, we are coming to issues of value, but just leave that one first five levels of prosperity can you turn it into a prayer and say lord i want to be complete i want to be prosperous indeed please everyone pray this is a very serious conference god is working on us you are praying in la bani kasatega erra kokonena siateza 
Don't be tired though. This is a conference. A conference. We'll speak and then we'll pray. Mention the five areas of prosperity. Allow the Holy Ghost grade you. What area have I suffered? What area have I left to suffer? From the time I started pursuing money, as you would say, my spiritual life went down. I have not contended for superior beliefs. My health is deteriorating. For some of you, you are growing spiritually. You are knowing the Lord. You are encountering God, but your finances are suffering. You are still not doing well. One more minute, pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now please sit down. Please sit down. What is money? I know that this is a church that is not ignorant as far as understanding money is concerned. Um, is it alright if I bring a bill or a note just to use? I found out that this is a very effective way of making Nigerians understand this definition. No matter who is sleeping, once you bring something up, they understand immediately. This is a hundred dollar bill. Please look up. And can I use you, sir? Any one of you, come. If I give this gentleman, please hold it huh, and lift it up. If I give this gentleman, it doesn't matter what direction, you just hold it. <laughs> you like money, huh? I will report you to your pastor. Now, watch this. If this gentleman is giving this, most times we say he has money. Is that true? And he also believes he has money. Are we together? Now, tear this in pieces in your mind now i, I want, want to respect this but just watch this while he's still standing remember he was happy that he has a hundred dollar now tear it drop it on the ground give it back to him what does he have why what suddenly changed you didn't clean anything on it you only altered you just tore this in six or seven places and still put it back shouldn't he be happy that you even made it easier for me to put it in my pocket so the act of just tearing this suddenly frustrates this man is this really powerful then what sort of value is this that the moment i tear it i can't do anything with it again Take the ton money to someone in a shop and say, I, I, this is not fake money. I just have a careless child who, while I was maybe using the restroom, the child thought that this was a piece of paper and he was tearing it and said, Mommy, see, you think the shop person will say, I understand, you know, children. No, he will politely dismiss you. Brothers and sisters, understand, I'm leading you somewhere. What is it about this that gives you confidence? One moment, and just because something happened to it. You become insecure immediately. Now what if you have 20 of this. And then you set it on fire. And it burns. Can you carry the ashes to CBN. And say I'm an innocent Nigeria. What happened is that my gas. At gas I don't know how this thing works. Listen. If you do not understand the accurate concept of money. You will live a very insecure life. So if my confidence is because this is in my pocket, I'm in trouble. 
notice when you leave your house without it you quickly run back it has the power to send you back to your house and you pick it and put it and say my soul find rest you left your house without it and you were not confident again so my, oh, so i'm sorry the moment i give you this don't talk to me like that what are you saying what is it about this thing that seems to give you so much confidence and then at the same time withdraw that confidence again this is a deliverance service happening here <laughs> ah goodness so this gentleman because he has this he may not rest again the moment he sees me he thinks i'm aware that he has this so he will hide it look what is happening to his emotions just because there is a piece of paper the paper does not talk yet look at the evil it is doing to you now listen carefully i'll tell the person please can you help me with and he, he is fighting a piece of paper in your pocket controlling your life relocating you from one region to the other that piece of paper forces you to get a visa whether you like it or not this piece of paper forces you to marry somebody whether you want the person or not this piece of paper as innocent as it looks what then is money money more than just a system look up please there are three things you need to understand about god and the way he designed this system for you to understand money number one you have to understand time number two you have to understand the reward system of the kingdom number three you have to understand the concept of destiny if you do not understand these three things you can never really understand money the primary assignment of financial resources primarily the primary assignment of money is for time redemption and efficiency listen carefully not <laughs> not houses and all of that the primary assignment of money is as a tool to help you redeem time and as a tool to make you efficient that means that if you ever claim to have money and you are not able to use it to redeem time and your life does not become efficient you did not use it well more than just a system of rewarding value and that is another valid definition too why because god designed us to live in the the economic system of the kingdom thrives on a reward system are we together now yes so this is a means of settlement a means of appeasal the international banks across the world some of them are called banks of settlement a psychological word in a financial institution why because it is a system of appeasal the secret to peace is justice so if i believe that i this is a hundred dollars for instance look at this if i give you this i expect you to give me something that i consider a value that matches it a reward if you do not give me this then something is wrong we can't have peace because there is no justice so money is a tool that helps you to it's a system of appeasal and settlement Are we together i'll be teaching you that one of the ways to live a peaceful life is to be rich listen it's going to be difficult to truly live a peaceful life if you are not rich jesus taught us how to be peaceful he said give to caesar every time you are serving god caesar is going to come and his assignment is the tribute so he says if you want to live in peace there are things that belong to Caesar. Don't argue. Make sure while you are preaching, Caesar's tribute is, at, is there. So that when he comes, you will give to him. When you can give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God, you become a peacemaker. 
I'm taking these concepts. Sorry for my going around with you like this. It will give value when we begin to discuss a number of things and when preachers come here, it will not just be, I want to prosper. I need a car. I'm tired of trekking. That definition is not deep enough to sponsor conviction. The Bible says, redeem the time. That means anything that stops you from redeeming the time is making you disobedient. You must fight it. There is only one reason why I hate poverty. I hate poverty not because it's from the devil. I hate poverty because of its effect. If poverty were neutral, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I hate poverty because of its effect to kingdom come, to my life, and to living. Are we together? Yes. Time redemption. So if I can trek for five hours and I can have a car that turns five hours to ten minutes, what did I do? I redeemed time. And if while I am in that car, I have the privilege to be comfortable and to think well, that is time redemption plus efficiency. Now it gives me the authority and the audacity to buy a good car without feeling guilty because I have I am sponsored by a higher motivation a motivation that is greater than proving a point there is a kingdom motivation so I don't feel sorry for buying a good car society this our world makes you feel guilty for prospering you prosper God lifts you you owe people explanations I'm giving you comfort by the word Are we together money is not just a means of exchange of value that is a very professional financial definition but more than that money is a tool one of the most effective tools for time redemption is money you can outsource the services of others to help you to be efficient you have only 24 hours and the load in your life needs more than 24 hours. So every time God brings this to your hands, what he's doing is not just making you look down on others. It's his way of helping you to live a very efficient life. Let me tell you, you don't know how efficient your life can be until God truly prospers you many troubles in our families can be rounded up in one week one week of peace and settlement are we in agreement now but the trouble that lingers there can remain for decades you asked me to come and speak i hope i hope i hope we're all right praise the name of the lord leave business we're coming there leave value leave investments don't worry your pastor is a veteran in these areas if your motivation is soiled you will be so frustrated you will be engaging the motions and not know why you are doing what you are doing god is helping us to live very wise and efficient lives because the unit of destiny is time and whatever you give your time to you have given a portion of your life do you know spending the rest of your life looking for money is a cost? Are you aware of that? I, I don't mean to insult your pedigree, but it's true. To spend money is a tool that you should have, just like anointing. Then use it to do something. If you spend your life having it, what is left for you to... You, you see that now? Money was never designed to be a lifelong pursuit. There should be a time T when God grants you grace, like your degree like whatever it is then you can now use it if you become wealthy at 80 you become wealthy at 90 it's not a testimony not to you not to anybody jesus finished his assignment at 33 and we have remained benefactors of the speed on his life you know there is a course in africa that i'm hoping in the course of this conference will break is the course of late achievement when a young man prospers at 22, 23, people say, no, 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 something is wrong. Abroad, you find people in, in their teens. I mean with the dignity of kingdom integrity. You buy a first card 40, 50 days, it's all right. 
know that's how we are while i'm speaking the holy ghost is speaking to you choose remember we, we how we started this lecture that you write down the things that lack of financial resources have cost to you what then is the pathway to wealth seeing that our lives are can be messed up by the absence of this and can be made efficient by the presence of this let me just balance another fallacy and then we'll discuss a few things no matter how much time i have will work the fallacy is believing that spirituality will automatically on its own translate into wealth and abundance that gives you stability it's a very well-intentioned truth but it's destructive that just because i have a healthy relationship with the lord jesus christ i love him with all my heart i'm a prayer warrior god forbid that i suffer my brothers and my sisters listen to me in the name of jesus and the name of honesty if you do not understand the dimensions of the kingdom excelling in one aspect of the kingdom does not replace another he said i will give you keys not a key a house has many doors if you have the key to the kitchen alone if you are hungry good for you but if you need to use the restroom and it is only the key to the kitchen you have you are still in the house but you will see how inefficient how inefficient you will be you do well in that house to the degree to which you have the keys to all the doors if you have visitors and it's only the key to the restroom you have do you put them there no so just to say i am in the kingdom and i have a key a key of prayer or a key of spirituality it will not automatically no listen i love jesus so i'm a man of prayer i'm a man of signs and wonders i didn't come from a background that taught us this it didn't give us this balance and thank god for bridging it early enough we would have been paying the price today and making nations to pay the price there are implications to ignoring other dimensions of the kingdom you are not the only one who will go down you will punish generations Are we blessed for many years we were told that you forget about all these nonsense people who are carnal you just focus on god and see if he will disappoint you ah, i know people today some of them wonderful contemporaries in ministry have you seen people go to pray and then they walk around for three hours you think they are praying they are thinking the bills are killing them We have children loitering around our society today. Children that come from Christian homes, but because they ignored this dimension, they trivialized it. Let me tell you this. You know how Satan attacks people? He studies what you know and what you don't know. Then he builds the system of attack out of your ignorance. The Bible says no weapon fashioned. Weapons don't just come. They are fashioned through study oh he notices that your your theology is imbalanced he can't attack you in the area of fasting he can't make you backslide because you are passionate you've gotten the key there so he will come to the areas you have ignored and build a system of attack from it most of our ladies that go into prostitution is it with poor men please talk to me in the name of honesty the hotels that they keep them do you pay for it for nothing with it for nothing some of you are in ministry here is until recently god began to correct that narrative you go and carry somebody who is a preacher and take to your father and they say okay my friend what are you doing i said well the lord called me i'm you know i'm a co-laborer with god and so on and so forth now watch this for a long time it was like a scar a demeaning scar to call upon the name of the lord when did answering the call become a cause 
The people are sincere. They look at you and say, what, what is the meaning of what do you do? Say, I serve God. What does that mean? Listen, God can be speaking to the lady. This is the man I've appointed for you. But poverty can change that prophecy and take that lady into the hand of a, a, a devil somewhere. And we keep watching and say it does not matter. Please, for the sake of your children, listen to what I'm telling you. You ignore what I'm telling you, you will pay the price. Some of you here, you are in this city right now. I don't mean to make you feel sad. I, I, I hope you understand that I'm not... You, you get what I'm, I'm saying? As you are seated right now, your loved ones are waiting for you by any means to learn this thing and come to them because they are absolutely clueless about what to do with their lives. Let's be sincere with ourselves. This is more than an issue of car and house. It's a matter of life and death. There are people today who have gone to the grave, pastor, who had no business going there. Poverty took them like an usher, ushered them from earth to another realm. The body of Jesus was hanging on that cross. 33 year old body hanging on that cross prayer could not bring it down fasting could not bring it down it took wealth to carry the body of your jesus to bring it down was the tomb your own do you know that tomb had an owner otherwise they would have left the body of jesus outside where then would resurrection happen would you ever be able to say oh grave where is your was there ever a grave it took well to make a grave happen for prophecy to happen listen do not think that this is some jamboree financial prosperity conference just jumping for nothing this is with a kingdom paradigm don't reject poverty don't allow well-meaning people whether they are preachers businessmen or whatever it is don't allow anybody make you to make a poor decision to remain poor it is not spiritual the unfortunate thing is that it will take you a long time before you believe you are wrong by the time you turn back to correct it you're already a grandfather the elderly people have wisdom but they don't have time to correct it young people have time but they don't have wisdom to make right decisions conferences like this match the old and the young and gives wisdom to your time. Are you blessed? So it is God's desire to prosper us. Let me give you three reasons why God prospers. Then I'll touch on one other thing and then we're done. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. God bless you. Please pay attention. There are three biblical reasons why God prospers us in this kingdom. Number one. The first reason God prospers us in this kingdom is so that we can live a comfortable life. Please write it down. The first reason why God prospers us in this kingdom is to enable us to live a comfortable life. God is not against your comfort. In fact, let me pause here for a minute and, and mention something here. As far as the quality of living is concerned, there are four realms. As far as the quality of living is concerned, there are four realms. The first and the last is dangerous. You shouldn't be there. The first realm, which is the lowest, is called survival. As far as quality of living is concerned, there are four realms. Number one, survival. Number two, comfort. Number three, luxury. Number four, extravagance. Both survival and extravagance can destroy your life. Four realms of living. The least is survival. Then comfort. Then luxury. Then extravagance 
Is God speaking to us? God desires for us to live a comfortable life. Please burn it in your heart and don't feel guilty about it. God desires for me to live a comfortable life. It is his will and I believe it with all my heart. The second reason why God blesses us in this kingdom and why he prospers us is so that we can finance God's purposes on earth. To finance God's purposes on earth. To be actively involved in this project called Kingdom Come. The second major reason why God prospers and why God blesses in this kingdom is to enable us to finance God's end time agenda. In fact, God's agenda. Please look up. Did you know, sir, that in other religions, it is part of the training and the indoctrination that you must be part of fi providing finance for the kingdom agenda? You understand what I'm saying? That means, for instance, you look at other religions like Islam and, and, and maybe Buddhism and the rest. It is not a special ceremony to coerce people. It's part of the training process from childhood that as you grow it is a responsibility upon you to make sure that you provide financial resources for kingdom activities that is a theology that is not taught the average believer foundationally speaking when we mentor believers immediately they give their lives to jesus christ this should be part of their training to know that supplying financial resources for kingdom activities is not something that happens during a fundraising or during a special program. It is part of the believer's responsibility. That means you don't have to wait until a special offering or a special collection. No, 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 no. I am a child of God. I am an ambassador of the kingdom. My resources should be part of kingdom come. David was so passionate about building God a house that he said, Lord, I will build you a house. Even though you are in heaven, the earth is your footstool. You don't need an earthly place, but I can't be in this palace. I can't be this. And then you don't have a house. And God said it was a good thing. But your hands have shed too much blood. I will not allow you to build. He said, still, I will gather the resources for my son to come and build. The character of love is that it gives. For God so loved that he gave. Your seeds. There are mission agencies. There are individuals. There is the house of God like this. I sat back and I watched, uh, um, I think one of the, what do what you call it now? The, the clips. Skip him. Yes. I was so touched i was just waving my head look at the joy that was on the face of those children listen to me the gospel is free but the means to take it to the lost is not free you have to understand this number two this god that we lift is very heavy it takes resources to lift him oh we lift your name high think about what you are saying It takes resources to lift him high above every other God so that the nations can see. We need the availability of financial resources. Number three, very quickly, why does God bless us in this kingdom? He blesses us to give us an opportunity to reveal the love and the compassion of the Father to a dying world. To reveal the love and the compassion of the Father to a dying world in a practical and a definite way to reveal the love and the compassion of the father to a dying world in a practical and a definite way very powerful definition to reveal the love and the compassion of the father to a dying world in a practical and a definite way please look at me god is not only the god of christians he's the god of all flesh and pastor gave a very 
powerful, powerful example, very powerful teaching before he went down. He said the truth is that there are people who cannot receive these true riches we're talking about. And so their prosperity and their well-being is dependent on your own obedience to God. It is difficult for God to be able to reach down to them because they do not even have the faculty to receive. So he will depend on you being prosperous and then you will reach out to them. You are the revelation of God to them. So every time God blesses me, I'm aware. This is why it came. Dr. Miles Munro said, when the purpose of, of a thing is not known, he said abuse is inevitable. You know the reason why people just abuse money? Because they do not know why it came. It's more than just building houses and having cars. Number one, my comfort. Number two, the kingdom. Number three, the world. God so loved the world. He didn't just love believers alone. Are we together? It is important. I learned this very early. Spare me the next 10 minutes if you can. And then let's begin to build on how God prospers. Let's do a quick recap. I started by setting a few foundations as to the understanding that governs kingdom wealth. That all wealth comes from God. And then that all wealth belongs to God. Don't forget. It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh. All wealth comes from God. So that when we are done, when you go home, you do a handover ceremony. Lord, I'm tired of taking a load that is not my own. You told me your yoke is easy. This thing on me is about to kill me. That means it didn't come from you. I relinquish ownership like a faithful bride. I'm comfortable with stewardship. Remain a bar. I'm tired of carrying a load that is bigger than me. Ownership is a serious responsibility. Stay away from it and focus on stewardship. You do not have the strength to manage the burden of ownership. It takes a creator to truly be an owner. The creator to be the owner. Are we blessed? Then we began to speak that to prosper means to do well. By the way, did I give you a scripture? Let me give you one. I think we should look at one scripture. Your pastor made reference to it. Psalm 35, 27. Psalm 35. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause yea let them say continually the lord be magnified which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant so god has pleasure in my prosperity remember we dealt with five areas of prosperity remember number one spiritual prosperity involves your being born again filled with the holy spirit growing in the knowledge of the Lord. I commend you, he says, to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. If you are not growing spiritually, you are not growing in the knowledge of God, growing in love, then you are bankrupt spiritually. Number two, mentally, we spoke about that, the development of your will, emotions, intellect, sustaining superior belief systems philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 the bible says let this mind the word let means to permit permit this mind this belief system to be in you which was also in christ jesus the bible puts it in a very interesting way it said this sign shall follow them that believe that means i know what you believe by looking at what is following you are we together now yes you don't drive what is following you you change what you believe what is following you is coming in honor to what you believe 
if trouble calamities disfavor all kinds of things are following you they are coming in honor to the belief system that you have you don't just cast them away there is a dimension of deliverance called deliverance through transformation deliverance is not only conducted it is preached and then bodily prosperity your health don't forget freedom from sickness diseases yokes and all kinds of demonic things that plague our bodies financial prosperity freedom from poverty remember lack and the negative effects that come there are negative effects jealousy anger all these things are effects that come with a life of financial bankruptcy then relational prosperity of course it's very important now let's discuss the economic system of the kingdom we're dealing with the laws of wealth and abundance let me just start by way of introduction and then we'll continue please whatever you have to do make that sacrifice as much as you can don't miss tomorrow's service praise the name of the lord the lord is going to be taking us from one level to the other is god lifting someone already how god blesses This is a world that works based on knowledge. God designed this kingdom to operate based on knowledge. The Bible says, but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine. Why? For your light is come. Not your light is available. It's always been there. But the day it comes to you, Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new life. For your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Then it says, for darkness shall cover the earth. Same word used in Genesis chapter 1. Tohu wa bohu, confusion and chaos and gross darkness the people. The people are darker than the earth. Darkness is upon the earth, but upon the people is gross darkness. Then it says, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Then it says, Gentiles shall come. Hallelujah. Gentiles shall come. Not to you, not to you, not to you, not to you. They kept passing you when you didn't have light. They didn't come to you. There is something that will make them pay attention to you. It's called light. It's a product, light. Gentiles shall come to your light. While the Gentiles are coming, their arrogant kings have light, so they won't come immediately. They will keep studying you. But a time will come, like the queen of Sheba, they will be compelled to see the excellency of your rising. They come not to your light, the brightness of your rising. Light is powerful. Please listen to me. The moment the light of God comes, liberty comes. The moment the light of God comes, enlightenment comes. John 1, 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Oh, light is powerful. Believe me, light is powerful. Psalms 82 and verse 5 very powerful scripture they know not the bible says neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you not some all of you are children of the most high the tragedy next verse but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes we must trust God for light. Illumination by the Spirit. Are we blessed? So what you are about to learn now, in the next... Do I have 10 minutes, sir? Okay. Please let me 10 minutes. I apologize already. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life must change. 
I will never be the same. I've touched His grace. My life must One more time. change. Prophesy to yourself. I will never be the same. I've touched His grace. My life must change. The day I found this truth, I cried like a baby. I cried like a baby. I rode before the God of my salvation. I waved poverty goodbye and I was shocked it waved me back. I'm sorry if it sounds arrogant, but it is knowledge that gives you stability. What you are about to learn, listen to me, it is not an opinion. This thing I'm teaching you now is older than us. We didn't invent it. We only found it. Jeremiah 6.16 says, Stand in the way. It says, Ask for the ancient path. It says, When you have found it, walk in it, you will find rest for your soul. These are the truths, brothers and sisters, that the patriarchs in the Bible walk with. These are the truths that non-Christians who will not profess Jesus are still walking in it. I give you a guarantee by the God of heaven. If you pay attention to these truths you are learning, then you are on a flight that will never go down again. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? There are laws that govern wealth and abundance. They are called kingdom laws. The economic system of the kingdom is based on laws. Please pay attention. Precepts and laws. That if we walk in keeping with these spiritual truths, they sustain the ability to lift us to realms beyond the reach, the limitations of poverty and so on and so forth. Deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 1. It shall come to pass, the Bible declares, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day, it leaves you with a blessing that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that this blessing will come upon you and will overtake you. Hallelujah. For a very long time, there has been an age-long fight between businessmen and pastors. Let's do a reconciliation service in one minute. Business people claim that pastors and ministers of the gospel only focus on giving, tithing, and so on and so forth, and tell people to prosper. And in truth, many people have done these things and it doesn't seem like the kind of prosperity they desired came to them. And then, here we have business people who say, forget about all those nonsense pastors are teaching you. You just come and learn principles here and there. And all of them in one way or the other have results to show. Are we together? The reason is because two of them are holding different sides of the same coin. Please look up. That when it has to do with wealth and abundance, it's a combination of spiritual laws and natural laws. They all together are called the kingdom laws of wealth and abundance. Are we together? So the laws of wealth and abundance are divided into two. There are spiritual laws. Please take note. There are spiritual laws of wealth and abundance. And then there are natural laws or business laws or physical laws. The assignment, let me tell you this, listen. The assignment of the spiritual laws is to guarantee the safe arrival of financial resources. That's it. Then the physical laws are responsible for the management and the multiplication of those resources if you know only the spiritual laws you will keep having testimonies once in a while but you will still be poor you will not get to that point where you can perpetuate wealth because the spiritual laws 
listen to me they ensure the arrival and the insurance the security of financial resources but when you want to perpetuate wealth and step into the dimension the bible calls the wealthy place leaving an inheritance for your children and your children's children you will have to understand the natural laws are we together so let me deal with the spiritual laws i'll just pick one for tonight and then we'll continue remember kingdom laws are divided into two as far as financial prosperity is concerned there are the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance there are the physical laws so let's start with the spiritual laws the first spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance <laughs> Is not giving please look up the first spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance is not tithing the first spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance is called the law of absolute surrender now if you do not understand this and you do not put it in this order it may not profit your knowledge the law of absolute surrender first kings chapter 3 please the whole verse for study is from verse 3 to 14 but we may not have all the time so let's just look at maybe verse 3 and 4 look up please the bible says and solomon loved the lord many times we think about his giving the thousand bond offerings he gave his encounter with god and the blessings that followed but the bible says Solomon, it talks about his relationship with God, walking in the statutes of David, his father. I have discovered, Pastor, that for people to be wealthy and still be relevant, the first law is the law of absolute surrender. Where everything you have, your life, your wealth, your intellect, is poured like a drink offering if that does not happen i don't care what else you obey there will be a side effect in the future proverbs 23 and verse 26 proverbs 23 please take it high for me proverbs 23 26 let's read together please one two three four five six the first six words ready one to read my son Give me not your offering, not your tithe, not your business idea. Leave that one. I want your heart because I designed the heart to host God. So everything that is in your heart is your God, no matter how you pretend it not to be there. Let me tell you this. When your heart truly belongs to the Lord, when he looks at it, he should reflect him back. He should see himself. But every time he looks at your heart, he sees a business idea. He looks at your heart, he sees something else. This is a secret that the Lord taught me. Why is it that many people keep laboring? They have all kinds of, they have the shop. Okay, you said I should sell, buy and sell something and I will increase. Now I have a shop and it looks like I'm struggling. When God can find the heart of a man, You read your Bible and see what God did to men who gave him everything. I hope you know that when you get saved, you didn't really give God your life. The theological explanation is that you received his life. You give God your life when you are ready to be used by him. Not when you are saved. I know we say it, I give you my heart. God understands what we are saying. But I'm telling you in truth. Surrender. When your heart is with him, God can say, transfer that 10 million. And you say, Lord, it was always yours. The last treasurer betrayed him. God is still looking for treasurers. They replaced many of the apostles, not the treasurer. God is still looking for men today. Who will, he said, his bishop let another take. The Bible never says Paul was a treasurer. He came as an apostle. God is still looking for stewards. I'm telling you, there are dimensions of wealth and abundance we are yet to see. 
God is looking for men and women. Do you know the reason why you trust banks? I'm wrapping up. You trust banks because of one simple explanation. Ease of withdrawal. That's it. The reason why you trust banks is because at any time of the day, you can slot your ATM and your 10,000 will come out. If the bank cannot give you your money, if you become like that ATM, God will no longer have a problem. Whether the money is with him or is with you, it means the same thing. Ease of withdrawal. Are we together now? Yes, sir. That everything God gives me, including my life, this encounter message is about wealth, oh, not even just about surrender or ministry. Are you seeing where a lot of people miss it? So many times we teach about prosperity and there are people full of carnality and lust in their heart. Just wanting money. They can kill for money. They can betray for money. They can leave God for money. Just give me the anointing for money, they say. Show me the business idea. But that lust and that corruption, God says, not my way. If it's my way, you must die first to leave. This we are discussing wealth. God is able to trust your pastors with the resources and the influence he has given them because he's found out that whether it's with them or it's with him, he's still glorified. Please listen very carefully. It's a big secret I have found with God. If you don't give God your heart, you have not started doing anything with him. Many of us bribe God. We come and give God a seed or give God something. And then our lusts are still piling up there, waiting for money to activate them. Do you know why God needs your heart? Because this money you see, there is a spirit behind it. If your heart is not surrendered to God, prosperity will tear you into pieces. By the time you become so prosperous, you may not see the need to study scriptures again. What for? When you almost don't have any prayer point again. You have a personal security system, a personal doctor, multiple citizenships, bank accounts and investments scattered around the world. Then we may become like the rich fool. My soul found fine rest. And he says, today, that heart you refuse to give me, today. Listen to me, believers. The excellency of the entrustment of kingdom wealth in our lives it's not only dependent on business ideas and all of these things is that god can find a people who love him so passionately people who love him that anything at all i continue to pray this prayer all the time pastor that anything god will ever give me that i would not be able to give him back or use it for his glory may it never come to me Minister Freke Omo sang a song that really blessed me. It's been an anthem for me of worship. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hands, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. There are people who betrayed the Lord because he prospered them. There are gospel ministers who came and rolled before the church altar. They received impartations and prophecies. The moment influence began to rise, they said, God, I suspect you are a nuisance to my rising. You wait until the day I need you. There are business people who that circumcision did not happen to. There are even preachers who that circumcision did not happen to. Before God starts with you, he says, I don't trust you until my, your heart is in my hands. Influence can destroy. You know what it means when you get to a point where human beings are
Ebon water, you worship me because of it. And God is saying, before you become an embarrassment to yourself, let's deal with it here. I don't have a problem lifting you. I don't have a problem prospering you. One connection I can bring to your life can wipe your family's tears forever. Listen to me. There are people here, we're wrapping up. But the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. It's not because God cannot lift you. It's not because Abuja is a good land. Nigeria is a good land. Africa is a good land. There are people who stumbled into prepared blessings because their hearts were already prepared before the Lord. There is something I know about God. When God decides to shake himself to lift you, you yourself will be the first spectator to your miracle. You will watch with wonder, God, what is this? Listen, this is a prosperity conference and many times it's very difficult to give testimonies. But I'll share one. I have God with my life and they said, no, we're not doing this emotionally. And I stood there, I said, okay, what is the meaning of this? And then I remembered. When you give God your everything, then he says, now shift. And let me show you what I can do. Don't think I don't know what I'm saying, my brothers and my sisters. Like I said, we live in a world where people misunderstand everything preachers say. So it's difficult to even share testimonies that challenge you. Because people will be angry and there are people who may be mistaking this now for pride. But I'm saying it so that you will believe. Testimonies were recorded, that's why we have faith today. He was in this city while I was in Zaria. A group of real estate people came and they said, we enter a covenant with God that everywhere we build, every estate we build in the world, we must keep a house for you. Every, provided we build an estate, just know there is a house there. I have never gone to one of them to check what is there. Which one is my own? Because I gave him my heart. I truly did. Many of you watched the videos while I was in Kenya a few years ago. Having a program. And I'm about to, I'm done. Just greeted everybody and I was on my way. And the pastor calls me and a group of businessmen who were in partnership with the American government and doing a business. And they say, Apostle, the Lord led us to give you five properties in Kenya. I have not gone there. I don't know where the ground is. They said, choose what you do with it, whether it's to sell it. I said, God, what are you doing to me? What is this? So listen to me. For some of you who sit down and say, preachers don't know, just leave me to hustle. You keep suffering the way you are suffering. Or pay attention and let God show you the path that brings you out. Can I tell you this? I stand before the God of my salvation. There is nothing in my life today that I cannot give God, including my life. May God forgive me if I stand here and I'm lying before his people. There is nothing. Houses, nonsense. Businesses, oh no, no, no. Why should I fear what people say? For they, they don't, don't know. What you mean to me? We're well, praying. Some of you are seated here and saying, Apostle, I didn't come from a family that had any privilege. And I'm the first God wants to raise. You came here with documents about business. Leave it. We'll discuss that one later on. What God wants this nice is not your document. You have been throwing it. We are going to spend the next two minutes i don't know how you will cry before god in this church and those following online you've not seen a prosperity conference like this i know you are not shouting up and down but i'm showing you an irrefutable formula there is a god in heaven who can lift there is a god who can bless he can take a man's prayer request and give you as a gift this is a lover's affair. 
is not just some selfish exchange between you and no is someone ready to cry before god in one minute you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly are Everything, 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 Lord, you are. Spend one minute crying before your God. Everything Take away the lust. Take away the corruption. Everything. The pressure to prove a point. Lord, prosper me. There are relatives who don't believe me. I need to show them there is nothing to show, my brothers and sisters. pray lord bless me there are people i need to punish there are people i need to know that's not the kingdom's way it is jesus ever jesus only in this kingdom we only gain when we lose whosoever keeps his life shall lose it the bible says Just one minute and we are done. Father, take away the corruption and the loss that is in my heart. When God tells you to hand over the, your heart, money can destroy you. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, it can bring pride. It can bring spiritual complacency. Prosperity gives you options. Take everything, Jesus. It is yours. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours. My life is yours. It's yours. It's yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Let that be your anthem, anything. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. A very big challenge in the body of Christ. Usually, this is where we stop, as powerful as it is. So we teach people to love God, pay your tithe, give and then when people begin to practice this miracles begin to happen testimonies wow a door just opened for me someone who forgot about me just remembered me gave me five hundred thousand, a million that's wonderful but you cannot be transgenerational that way i told you that these spiritual laws you see um let me say something and it's it's, it's an admission the way God blesses ministers of the gospel, men and women of God, is slightly different from the general way he increases people. There is a Levitical advantage we have by reason of priesthood. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even though it is still value, but I can pray for someone now and God will lift him and he can buy me a car and give me a house. You see, if you are not me and you are not preaching that template may not be easily available for you 
so you have to learn god's defined patterns not the exceptions most times what we teach are the exceptions so you find out that the individual now who does not have a mic to talk to anybody or prophesy to anybody does not have anybody who would just arbitrarily give you a car and a house so you must learn how to build one are we together now yes the spiritual laws are responsible for the arrival of resources but then just because the resources have arrived does not necessarily mean that you can perpetuate wealth this is what business people and captains of industry have observed for many years they have spoken and said pastors and men of god we respect what you have been teaching but we think something is incomplete in your theology of wealth as much as you have spoken about surrender as much as you have spoken about tithing as much as you have spoken about giving just merely giving and merely tithing will not arbitrarily make people wealthy transgenerationally spiritually the engraving will be there but in reality and in experience you may never have that and so thank god for a platform like this that creates the balance are we together now so what you are about to learn are the principles these these are principles that are consistent with scripture but i want you to open up your heart to learn them because in addition to what you learned yesterday and in the first service and the many more that you'll be learning there is nobody who will truly teach you the kingdom's way of wealth and ignore these truths they are not opinions they are the precepts there are not many ways there is the way hallelujah are we blessed so let's look at the natural laws of wealth and abundance i don't know how many of them we can cover but we'll hopefully just touch one or two and then pray the day the lord grants us another opportunity i'm sure that the lord would use me or any of his servants and grant us grace hallelujah natural laws natural does not mean they don't have the power of god no they are just that these are laws that are applicable to all men the spiritual laws give us an edge and an advantage because we are in christ but these natural laws are principles that anyone can apply. You see, the thing about the laws of God, the natural laws especially, is that you don't have to believe in God for them to work for you. There is a dimension of God's power that is already invested in them. Even if an umbrella farms, the crops will yield. Are we together now? Yes. Because a law was already invested in the earth that it should produce. And so I pray that God will grant us grace. The first law, and this is one of the most powerful, one of the most powerful natural laws that you will ever be taught about wealth and abundance, is called the law of the mind. The law of the mind. The law of the mind. This is a very fundamental financial law. Remember I told you yesterday that years ago in my quest to learn about finance, I stumbled across books. I have studied the Forbes list of 100 billionaires one by one. Every one of them. You know, most times people think men of God don't know anything about money, that all we're doing is just fasting and praying. We have serious people. And then because I also don't want to be poor, we've agreed that poverty is very evil and bad. Don't believe it, don't accept it, not for you, not for your children. There is no blessing in it, believe me. I've had the privilege of studying materials of very successful people in a quest to understand and foolishly 
every time i saw them talk about the traits and the mindsets that made for wealth i thought they were just deceiving people i was really sad because i thought you just tell me okay this is a book what business are you doing what job do you have go straight to the point i said you don't have that time to you write a 240 page book all talking about how to think what in the world is that but i didn't know what i know now but thank god i still know it now all the same and i'm praying that as i share with you this truth that god will grant you the grace to really really understand the mind is a powerful miracle a powerful miracle that god gave man you cannot sustainably be wealthy if you do not possess the requisite level of belief systems please listen there is a set of beliefs that make for wealth there is a set of beliefs that make for poverty in fact the reason why the law is this i started talking about it yesterday the bible says this sign shall follow them that believe so everybody believes and what you believe will attract physical things to come to you trouble tragedy failure something about your belief system is attracting them if you are tired of them you don't drive them away they will remain provided the belief system is there what you do is to change the belief system and then they will go with that belief system now there are many wrong belief systems the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart he didn't say so he will become so he is you already are your thoughts literally literally your belief systems create your possibilities and create your realities this is not some scientology this is the word of god the bible says let this mind be in you jesus did not just carry a healthy spirit he carried a healthy belief system there was a belief system that made for the signs and wonders there was a belief system that made him to build something and conquer the whole world in three years he says permit that mindset to be in you which was also in christ jesus hallelujah yeah. the journey one of the hardest assignments of the holy spirit if i would use that expression in the life of the believer is convincing you to leave your current thinking your current mindset and adopt a superior one because you see we have built a system of comfort around our current thinking and every time the challenge comes to transit is usually uncomfortable so the holy spirit has to continue to help us through the world to engage in strategic transformation not just new information information that is superior and sustains the ability to change our lives you are not changed until your mind changes watch this i i gave this example many years ago while i was teaching on a financial series you notice that someone can wear a nice cloth beautiful cloth say a white shirt and that person may be with that shirt for one year and you'll still see it looking new carry that same shirt and give someone who is running around the street in two weeks the mindset of that person will start speaking on the shirt the same shirt someone wore many times we complain and we say a ceo is receiving one million per month and not doing anything we say under ac with juices and all kinds of things and then we complain that there is a security man at the gate and is receiving thirty thousand. it's unfair here is my proposal switch them take the ceo to the gate and take the gate man to the office let me attempt to describe for you what will happen the first thing the gate man will do is to steal as soon as he lands there the shock he knows that he will not be there for a long time he's already aware so the first thing he will do is he will not place value on the files 
because information is unnecessary for him he will never open the laptop or he will be thinking of selling the laptop not opening to find out what is there he will check quickly if there's physical cash there are we together he will not collect the phone numbers and the contacts there they mean nothing to him he wants to sell the phone the owner whoever he sells the phone to can delete the contacts because to him the phone is richer than the contacts are you seeing now i'm describing for you what will happen he will open the fridge and eat and eat even when he's full and steal everything and two three days the office will start looking like his mindset dirty unkept everything scattered disorganized now let's go to our ceo who is at the gate the first thing the ceo will do is how can i automate this gate because i can't keep pushing like that he will sit down the first thing he's at the gate and then his character of courtesy will make the people to not need to go to the office again they will start stopping at the gate because their problems will be solved there so the man collecting the one million was not the ceo it was the mindset the man collecting the thirty thousand was not the security man it was the mindset come let's assume that this gentleman is an armed robber the moment you catch this man stealing and you shoot him it is not an armed robber that is on the ground it's a dead body so who was really the armed robber there was a thinking that convinced him that you have to steal to get now assuming you preach this man comes to a church like this and suddenly you preach to him and he gives his life to christ the same person who was once an armed robber now becomes a man of god the body did not change what change now look with me a naive young man who just gets admission to study mbbs confused and yet believes that one day he'll be called a doctor they never change the body they may not even change the cloth they pass him through a system and after six seven years his name changes immediately because a belief system was given to him so the millionaire is not the body the millionaire is the mindset the poor man is not the body the poor man is the mindset as he thinketh in his heart something that has refused to leave you is there in honor of your mindset the pain the disappointment there is something about your belief system that drives good people from your life it's not just everybody hates me no you may be well intentioned but you must be schooled and mentored and reoriented are we together have you noticed that as you rise higher and higher the executive cadre the people are more cautious more understanding lower down the chain you find people shouting what, what do, you, do you think it's just because i'm walking here i'm this and that and that and then someone comes out who is the head of operations all right sorry we're really sorry okay that's okay let me talk to the person and they know immediately that this is a senior executive he doesn't have to say it he doesn't have to wear anything his mindset immediately shows the difference between him and the rest and he invites that one to the office and he's talking could it be that the reason why things are not working is because there are belief systems we have sustained are we together now thank you now let's examine very quickly a few belief systems i'm going to be very fast forgive me i will give you very quickly four reasons why so many people are poor are you ready number one they have not decided to be wealthy on the one on the line the word decided many people are poor because they have not decided to be wealthy they wish to be wealthy they hate poverty they talk about prosperity but they have not decided to be wealthy the difference between a wish and a decision is that a decision is a determination to reach an end with the awareness of the consequences that it will take 
are we together one day go beta is just a sociological way saying a decision is a determination backed up by the willingness to pay the price until that willingness is there it's not a decision many people have not decided they have decided to hate poverty they have decided to talk about their problems but they have not decided to be wealthy number two why are so many people poor they do not have a goal to be wealthy a clearly defined desire a clearly defined expectation Pastor, things are not working in my life. What do you want? I don't know. I just know that things are not working. You are not going to get it that way. Imagine a man entering a car and he just kicks it and starts running. Where are you going to? He said, just keep watching. Have you climbed a bike going somewhere? And then the bike man claimed that he knew where he was going. Oh, do you know this place? Ah, I know it. And then later on, you find out that he's been going around an area for a long time. Say, I thought you said you know it. Say, well, eh. Uh, at the last time i don't know if he's that i think we missed somewhere yet the guy claimed he knew where he was going it's amazing that for 99 percent of your journey you never see your destination yet if you are sure of it you will get there there is no goal for many of us we have not set it as a goal to be wealthy number three why are so many people poor they lack the understanding of the real formula for wealth and abundance. Oh, there is, a, there is a real formula. There is a science to wealth and abundance. And many believers, many well-intentioned, well-meaning church people do not really know the formula. We just know pieces of information that relate to wealth, but they've not been sequentially and methodically arranged to produce prosperity. The formula for wealth and abundance and then number four why are so many people poor lack of the mental transition from the realm of poverty to the realm of wealth the inability to contend for transition the mental transition it will take to move from the realm of poverty to the realm of abundance is God helping us already now I'm, I'm working on our mindsets now there are five myths that surround the issue of prosperity and abundance there are five mindsets five major mindsets pastor that i have found out that most people who don't succeed they have those mindsets dangerous belief systems can we walk through them five very quickly number one the first belief system is that money and abundance is carnal, is evil, or is unnecessary. And they get that scripture from 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10. Money and abundance is carnal, is evil, and is unnecessary. So in a bid to be holy or in a bid to love the Lord, they feel that I have to reject wealth and abundance. And this is the scripture. For the love of money is the root of all evil. The Bible never said money is the root of all evil. It says for the love of money. The word there is eros. One of the translations of the word love. Eros. Eros means an ungodly affinity. An attachment that is at the detriment of your relationship with God. It says when you have that kind of affinity towards money, it becomes the foundation for all kinds of evils are we together now materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of materials over your relationship with god there are poor people who are materialistic money and abundance is carnal if i ask all of you to shout the word rich you will be surprised how embarrassed you will be mentioning that word you are a Christian or you are born again. You've been praying in tongues for a long time. I just say, shout the word rich. You will feel guilty almost to ask for forgiveness. There is something, there is a programming that has happened to us. We associate wealth with a very, very negative disposition. Number two, very quickly. 
what's the second myth that keeps people poor if god really wants me rich he will make me rich so we leave the responsibility to god and we get our backing from psalms 84 and verse 11 please pay attention if god really wants me rich he will make me rich so if i'm not rich it must be that god wants me this way and here's the scripture the bible says for the lord god is a son and a shield he will give grace and glory no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly so we use it as a justification it is within his power to make great riches and wealth and honor in his hands so if god wants me to prosper i'm sure he would prosper me it was bishop Oyedeko who said every christianity that makes god entirely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible christianity there will always be a participatory role that you have to play in actualizing any divine promise in your life are we together myth number three that tithing is the one and only key to abundance it looks like a very sincere understanding but it's a dangerous one there are many people who believe that the only key to wealth and abundance is tithing tithing is the one and only key to abundance they say because of malachi chapter 3 and verse 10 that is a very destructive myth tithing is a foundational key like we've considered but in truth it is not the only key it is one of the many keys are we together very quickly number four and pay attention to this one because many many people africans nigerians are victims of this mindset here it is if all i have is a business idea and startup capital i will be rich oh dear i repeat if all i have is just an idea and capital i will be rich it's not exactly so business idea plus capital is not equal to abundance there are many other variables in that equation are we together yes. i remember someone who met her uncle years ago harassing the man and trying to point to the man that he's been so insensitive to the needs of the family and the man said i know if i give you people money you're not going to do anything and he said uncle give us xyz amount and we'll never disturb you for the rest of your life and the man the man just laughed and he gave them something small he said if you can come back after two or was it two or three months and prove to me that you've used it well i will give you more guess what happened they never came back because chances are if they give you capital your mindset will not allow you to rest you will first touch it then you will borrow from it promising to return back then you will get into trouble then you pass a restaurant and there's no self-control and you say what is there i can't be holding money like this and kill myself even god knows that you see that these are all the traits by the time you get home the money has divided into half then you will emotionally get up after listening to a message and carry the remaining and say you are sowing it and as good as that looks at the end of it you will go back and you will feel you will feel evil for what you have done mindsets it didn't work that means there is more to the equation let's discuss the last one the last one is called entitlement mentality oh dear nigerians entitlement mentality what is that the feeling that someone somewhere is responsible for your success the feeling that someone somewhere could be an uncle could be a friend could be your pastor could be your family members could be your relatives that somebody somewhere owes you success there are people who move around getting angry with uncles and aunties in nigeria if you prosper from a family where you are the only one who rises you have to pray for the rest to rise too because if you rise alone everybody will come and blackmail you i'm a stakeholder in that such confidence they harass you they make you feel guilty that's why people don't testify nobody will testify that the money they have been waiting for has arrived because they don't want trouble as soon as people are, are aware 
Oh dear. Mindsets. 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 Let me show you something. Genesis 11. Genesis 11. We're going to read the first four or five verses. It was a revelation God gave me that changed my life, Pastor. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Please look up. Verse 2. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shina, and they dwelt there. Nimrod Kush now and his team. Verse 3. And they said to one another, Go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. Keep that scripture there. Now let me explain to you what happened. Nimrod Kush, alongside his team, they came from the east to the land of China, intending to build a city and a tower, they said, whose top will reach the heavens. And the first thing he began to do was to market that idea. They had not started building. He started speaking to them. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to build and the tower will reach the heavens. Let's see what happens in the realm of the spirit. Verse 4. It says, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach the heavens and let us make us a name. Lest we be scattered abroad from the face of the whole earth. Verse 5 now. The Bible says, and the Lord came down something was happening from earth that attracted there are not many times god came down to the earth remember in this story demons are not mentioned satan is not mentioned just men and their minds the bible says the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men have already finished building they have not started building it yet but just because their minds were receiving that idea in the realm of the spirit god saw a structure already building understand this and he came to see it and he said as far as these people are they have conceived this as a reality the building is finished he had to scatter them physically this they begin to do the next verse says and they have one language and this they begin to do so physically they were about to start the project but in the realm of the spirit, it was finished. This is powerful. Everything is built twice. First in your mind and then physically. If that thing is built in your mind already, there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to stop it from manifesting. Please listen, listen. I always counsel people that rather than living a fake life, trying to wear clothes that you are not yet ready for trying to you know fly a business class you're not ready for no don't worry don't worry about the body just let the mind go ahead your mind can be an usher when it gets there your mind will lead your body to that realm for sure are we together now yes Every man you see, while I was watching the, the documentary of one of the men who will be coming to speak to you, your pastor was just telling me a little about him. And could you see the contrasting photos? A young man who was playing, looking dirty and tattered is the man now who owns a group of companies around the world. What change? Not his body. You could still identify his face, the mind. Let me tell you, transformation is a real miracle more than lifting someone from a wheelchair transformation is a miracle the miracle of the mind my life began to change when i found out that when you change in your mind everything around you changes now i want to demonstrate something i do it every time i'm teaching about the mind and i'm praying that if all we talk about is the mind that's that's still sufficient for this service because for many of us, these business ideas, investment, just leave those things. Wealth is not pursued. Wealth primarily is attracted through your growth and transformation. More than what you do, it is who you are that attracts wealth. Listen again. More than what you do, 
it is who you are that attracts wealth life is dimensional and every level you rise to there are possibilities already designed by god to come to you let me give you an example how many of you know that if your pastor stands up stage here now and says i am hungry what do you think will happen to you as soon as you hear him say i am hungry you will begin to invent what can i cook for my pastor because the level god has lifted him should not allow him say i am hungry and remain hungry so now he's getting that blessing through growth it's not so much what you are doing the most powerful blessing in your journey to wealth is not the money itself it's what happens to you on the way it is greater than the money ask any blessed man their real satisfaction is not naira and kobo the naira and kobo is just the receipt that you arrived well it is your transformation who you become the newer version of you is more superior than the business when you talk to wealthy people when they are talking to you personally they will not talk about their businesses they will not talk about all those things they will talk about their stories they want to show you their transformation now i want to show you something many of you have watched videos where i demonstrated it let me do it one more time is that fine please let me have six people six well-dressed gentlemen no 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 you sit down let the workers okay just a few people just come just stand three here and then three here please may you never forget this example for the rest of your life stand this way my friend just turn you stand just turn all of you facing me you turn the same way yes now watch this ah may someone see this and understand space yourselves a bit guys watch this life is in levels everybody watch this please life is in levels you hold this you hold this hold it carefully you hold this don't mind my example I'm, I, I'm insisting that you must understand are we together now at every level in your life watch this remember these are the things lift everything you're holding please remember these are the things you want fame cars business pounds dollars they are already a possibility but every time they come to you there is a version of you they are looking for listen carefully it is not every version of you that can attract them so they keep coming and they don't meet you because the you they are looking for has not yet evolved listen carefully it looks like right now this is you standing here oh god why wouldn't my life change what is there about a car that you will not give me it's already in your destiny but the version of you it is looking for you have not evolved yet into it please listen carefully so what happens these are all the things how am i going to get a house how am i going to get money how am i going to get lifting don't worry that's none of your business the god who designed the system is intelligent enough save yourself the stress of thinking of how they will come they are already there everything you are looking for is also looking for you but it's not looking for this version of you please listen you came to church gentlemen please shift back a little here's what i want you to do for me every time i take a step forward come close to me too watch this i'm transforming my mind i know that one day i will meet these things so as i'm studying books and praying shake it lord i will not be a failure are you seeing this now i am growing what is happening to me as i am growing suddenly i begin to have some testimonies in my life what is suddenly happening in my business i'm beginning to meet a class of people my phone contact is changing it's a report card i didn't even know when some numbers were deleted from my phone i didn't delete it intentionally very soon my phone too will change not just the contact one day by what you call coincidence i will meet with a tailor who will start sewing properly for me he was always there my growth listen come a realm will come when you are in the middle of all this the wealthy place 
at your beck and call you can pick them they have now come close to you go back again guys let's do it again let me show you where you are now every sunday when you come to church you may not know what is happening come sunday next week week after next while you are praying in your room while you are studying pastor's materials this is what is happening foolish people will tell you you are still there in that one room they do not know that your evolution is calling things to your life listen to me now watch this go back let me show you something let me show you what a fake life is stand here a fake life is you have not been transformed to this realm yet you want the result of that realm so you will quickly save money and buy it and the moment you buy it your mind will interpret it as an error because your mind says you are possessing something that your growth should not have in your life coincidences will make that thing leave you you must return back to your real state this is a law this is the mystery behind this balloon success you see here and there suddenly someone just got five million and the guy is happy and in his mind he believes that his colleagues with all those who grew to that realm you know you have gotten to a realm where everything in your life also grows you cannot be in a business class i'm not insulting you don't feel bad you cannot be in a business class with a wristwatch of 2000 you are not yet there because when you really grow there everything grows also are we together you can't be driving a jeep and then packing to buy one gallon of fuel you are not there no true wealth is a product of being not doing but the people that do know they are god so knowledge first then they shall be then they shall do they shall be then they shall do focus on being more than doing this is why any business you do fails it's not always an attack the problem is a mindset if i wear a jean trouser it's the same me if i decide to wear agbada it's the same me so no matter what business you switch to if it's the same mindset running that business it will still fail the same way if your mindset has transited anything at all can bless you someone lay hands on your head and decree and declare lord i agree with you for my transformation i'm tired of holding on to age-long beliefs that keep me poor that keep me limited now i know that it's not just about doing business as important as that is it's about my transformation my growth hallelujah listen many years ago I was in one room one small room when the Lord told me I would take you to the nations and I will bless you you will stand before Kings one room and yet I agreed with him my body did not need to leave the room my mind since I can't get a visa let my mind go no immigration officer will stop it Holy Spirit hold that mind and let's go And when your mind goes there, your mind returns back to tell your body that place exists. Let's go. Your mind is the authorized usher that leads your body. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Most of us feel stupid. If they call you now and say, what are you doing about your finances? And you say, I'm studying materials and I'm building. Most people will laugh at you and say, sit down there and die. Don't go and look for something to do. It's not always what to do. It is your being first. You do not get afraid. Take your pastor now and his wife. Take him to London. Take him to US. Give him six months. He will reproduce this result. Because it did not come by chance. It's a product of knowledge and enlightenment when you prosper just by doing you will be afraid of your result because you will suspect it will not last and you are right it won't last but if what you get is by growth everything around you does not make you afraid because even when it disappears you have the power to make it happen again this is why it will be easy for you to give 
if someone dash you money and they gave you one million if i come as a man of god and i say give me the one million will you agree you will look at me and say i cast i respect you but i i cast that spirit from you but if you got it by knowledge and growth you can give freely because you have the power to replenish i'm not afraid of any result in my life today i tell you sincerely none of it came by luck it can be reproduced a thousand times regardless the geography i'm sorry if i sound arrogant it is true if in 24 hours no one favors me i will go for a retreat at the level god has brought me now because i know 24 hours is too much God brought you to church to shake you and to challenge you. Not just that you are mesmerized by this truth. Because some of you, you are here, you are saying, Apostle, I don't know where to start. Don't worry. You are learning the laws. Remember again. You are a man of God. You are moving around with invitation cards. I'm anointed. No. The fact that you have to tell people you are there as a man of God is a sign that something is wrong. You are a worker in church. This is how you start. While you are growing, this will start happening to you. Supernaturally, in your department, they will say lead prayer one day. Are you seeing now? When you lead that prayer, then one day, the pastor will say lead opening prayer in church and he will gather all your destiny helpers in front of you that day. But when you have worked on yourself, it becomes your season of appearance. The moment you say that God will cause someone to look at you and say, ah, what is it that you do? You say, well, God is helping me. You say, I have one youth fellowship. Would you come and just say hello to them? Don't despise them. Because that day, God will make the owner of an oil and gas company to come and just decide to join his children that day. Let me show you the mysteries of the lifting power of transformation. While God was training you, he never told you you will meet an oil and gas person. Your growth keeps drawing them. Save yourself the stress of knowing how it will happen. No, that's not your assignment. How is a burden that is bigger than you? Just as you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of how, who is with child, nor the way of the wind, the Bible says, so you do not know the ways of God. His ways are past finding. Leave that to his intelligence. Yours is to just trust. There are people God has brought to my life today. I never, how would I have met them? Growth. You see, when you are growing, you are not the only one growing. So all those who are growing like you, there is a point you will meet. The CEO that you are looking for is also growing. You just keep growing. Forget about trying, trying. You are not alone. The Holy Ghost is there helping you. One day, somewhere at the point of your growth, there will be a collision. It's no coincidence that we are meeting with your pastor today. And his wife and preaching in the church here remember once upon a time this place was not here i was asking him yesterday and said how did you build this amazing place and when he told me the story i said there it is egypt they left egypt in one day but they carried egypt in their mind egypt kept causing trouble for them a journey of 40 days became 40 years because egypt would not leave them Many of you have left your village, but it's still with you. Many of you have left your pain, but it's still with you. Many of you left yesterday, but yesterday is still relieving itself in you. You came to church this morning to say enough is enough. Some of you just, you are waiting right now. Oh God, capital. Are you seeing that not every delay is demonic? God delayed your uncle from giving you that money until you hear this message. Otherwise, you will waste that money the same way it happened last year again. I know that all it takes in fact i know the mistake i made yesterday i'll correct it now and your mind is still in yesterday i am passionate about my transformation i am passionate about my transformation jesus at age 12 when his colleagues were running around causing trouble in the city he was there engaging in transformation by age 30 that gentleman was already ready to take the world 
listen to me some of you are seated here right now nobody may know you but let your mindset transit enough and one day you will see the people you used to admire bow their heads and say it's an honor to meet you and then you will tell the person do you know i desired seeing you brothers and sisters listen to me i know what i'm telling you the lord through your transformation you give god space to open up doors and do tremendous things in your life one more time let me show you your destiny are you willing to pay the price instead of buying clothes and living a fake life buy the materials that transform you ah, i came to your house and all i see is just gary take it with honor while you grow don't be embarrassed at your today you will miss it soon don't rush seasons and while you grow lord i know the nations will come to bless me in the name of jesus lord i may come from a background where nothing is happening but i trust your ways i know i am rising i know i came from a family where we never had a television but lord i know and you open your eyes one day and you are in the midst of blessings that will never be reversed again do you believe what i just shared with you listen to me i give you an assignment focus on building your mind more than the job you do more than the business you do the real place of investment is your mind anything outside you don't trust it things are only secured when they are inside you <laughs> i don't trust anything outside me but what is in you Are we blessed you have some money right now in your pocket you have some money right now in your account i know you have some properties for some of you you have some businesses that are flourishing i agree i respect what you've done so far but god is shifting us to realms realms beyond what you have seen possibilities that will dumbfound you many of the people you are looking for today if you will pay the price for your growth i tell you a law was created and creation still respects that law when you grow that which is equivalent to your growth must come to you must come to you must come to you how many of you have thought of someone and then the person is just calling you because it's a law he didn't just think of you he didn't just call you there is more than happens in that happens in our world than the physical you have to believe this do you know why god is teaching us this so that you can defend your prosperity because we live in a nasty society that believes people are just lucky so when you come they just tell you how oh, you are lucky i'm sure they just favored you that son name is it the one that i know and you are even saying you learned any principle they just dash you money no you can make defense of the truth that you have that i, I was yes it's the grace of god but it's not by luck i can reproduce it again then you can raise others also literally lift people from ground up there is a science to abundance one of it is the law of the mind can you give me five minutes to talk on one more Gentlemen, thank you. The Lord bless you. You will never go down in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Are we blessed? Pray in the Spirit in one minute. Just to absorb what you have received. Shilas kali prahagaduzia katabrendegidirash. That's all right. Praise the Lord. Now listen. The second law is called the law of value. The second law is called the law of value. Proverbs chapter 18 and 
verse 16 the law of value my god somebody's life is truly changing in the name of jesus the christ of god someone's life is changing look up please proverbs 18 and verse 16 says the gift of a man makes room for him the gift of a man makes room for him and that gift like an usher can bring him before great people he has no business being among the great but his gift can make room before then there's no room for him there was no room for esther the palace already had someone sitting there. But the gift of a man, the law of value, write this down. Your value is a measure of your usefulness. Your value is a measure of your uniqueness. Your value is a measure of your capacity to provide solutions. Your value is a measure of your usefulness your value is a measure of your uniqueness your value is a measure of your capacity to provide solutions this is a world that operates based on a reward system that means that if you are not providing solutions listen carefully there is no reward that is mandated to come towards you if you are not providing solutions. Only those who provide solutions are authorized for reward. Not those who are alive, not those who are living, not even those who are sincere. Your value is the edge that you have in this busy world that's what sustains the ability to cause the attention of men towards you to love you to reward you and to see to it that you are blessed many many people do not pay attention on this law the law of value the bible says the gift of a man can make room for him it says and that it can bring him before great people. I wish we had time, we would have looked at Genesis chapter 40 and Genesis 41. Write it please for the sake of time. The Bible talks about a young Hebrew boy. When a lady said he raped her, the, the wife of, um, um, what's his name now? Potiphar. They threw him in the prison. And he was there. Didn't know he was just days. I mean, maybe about two or so years left to be out of the prison. He meets these two gentlemen and then interprets their dream. One was hung and then the wine presser was restored back. Watch this. When it was time for God to lift Joseph, he shot the heavens over the sorcerers, the necromancers. They could not use divination again to access heaven. Let me tell you how God lifts. He makes sure that everyone who can be a competitor is out of the way. And then he pushes you and shines the light on your value in the presence of those who need it. Your value on its own does not reward you until it comes in the presence of those who need it. Your value must be needed and useful within the context of a civilization for it to be rewarded. Mere value, arbitrarily speaking, does not bring reward. But it must be needed and useful. So that morning, the king woke up with a dream. And he said, something is wrong. Call my wise men. Call my necromancers. And that day, the heavens could not open for them. And then the wine presser said, I remember my wrong this day. There was a young man. We were in the prison. The king was angry and, it, and this and that and that and he's still there. The Bible says, and the king sent for him and they brought him out of his dungeon. Then the king began to narrate his dream and Pharaoh la um, Joseph laughed. I'm sure he would just be happy and say, my time has come. I know I'm not going back to prison again. Oh king, God will give the king an answer of peace. The dream you've had is twice. And when he interpreted it, that was not the solution. 
they would have said thank you very much give him one day off back to the prison but he said king let me give you the solution find a man it's a diplomatic way of saying i dare you search if you will find a man he just was being polite about it he wouldn't market himself directly like that so he angled it he said let the king use your initiative and search the entire egypt if you find such a man appoint him to save 20 percent of all the increase now for seven years so that at the time of famine you will have enough and the king looked at him and said you think i'm a stupid king didn't i search for people before i called you in a moment his value gave him a wife you know that he married the daughter of potiphar the priest of on like that without any waste of time of will you marry me and the, the wife was given to him value are we together number two the king said from today it is only in ranking that i'm ahead of you as far as administration is concerned you are the face that the whole egypt will see i wonder what potiphar would have done i wonder what the wife of potiphar would do seeing him now brothers and sisters your value has a lifting power it can elevate you and put you in a position that your contemporaries would not even be able to go there value is powerful just lend me a few minutes we're done when i found this i made up my mind pastor that in every area where the lord would have me serve the body i would be competent and be valuable it was a commitment and a covenant that i entered with myself and my destiny apostle but i'm valuable relative to who oh i'm a good cook until you can serve kings you are not yet there if you want the reward of kings you have to know how to serve kings i am a cook who is eating your food why do they have to call you only when the professionals disappoint people that's already a call that you need to step up this is even true for ministry maybe there are people watching who are in ministry and you think just because the holy ghost comes upon you are we together just because of the grace of god no you must study to show yourself approved you must be students of scripture make up your mind i say the truth and i lie not you go to my house now you will go and find videos i'm watching there are things i'm doing even though there's service in the evening but once i'm back i could take a nap and i'm not just going to laugh and say i'm apostle joshua selman the study continues i can return back from a great crusade lord thank you for what you did that's it let's get to work champions don't pat themselves for too long listen to me you are not contending against mediocres you must rise to a global standard and it takes diligence you must be valuable don't quote scriptures anyhow as a man of god you are saying things that are not there prophecy is still wrong you call somebody's name he's not the one you have five children and say, no no i'm the only one child no 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 I, i'm not i'm not condemning you but go back and work on this thing are we together you have a restaurant your food burns before the time people are hungry they are thirsty they are waiting there's no excellence you must be valuable the superstition we've put around finances is why we don't prosper there is a formula for wealth in business we call it the law of compensation let me just state it and we'll wrap up for this service this is church you see why it's important to hold conferences where we can come and feast because this thing takes time i found this law and it changed my life write it down please that our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to three things our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to three things number one the need for what you do number two 
the ability your ability to do what you do that's your level of proficiency and then number three the difficulty in replacing you our rewards will always be in exact proportion to three things number one the need or the demand for what you do number two your ability or your proficiency in doing what you do and then number three the difficulty in replacing you you are valuable to the degree to which it is difficult to find a replacement for you no man is indispensable but be very hard to find a replacement for you then the nations will call you then even those who don't like you will have no choice than to be at your beck and call when i found this formula i said this is it the need is there a need for what i do my god there is darkness in this whole world so the next thing is my ability the union of the word and the spirit i read in my scripture how god anointed jesus of nazareth not just that he was anointed he was anointed to such degree and such proportion and i said this is it and then the difficulty in replacing you will you truly find another pastor godwin and the wife oh it will be difficult many of us are easily replaceable that's the reason why you can be downsized carelessly that's why people can give you promises and say when i spoke to you i didn't know there was another person now that they are here please can you go i will consider you another time you must make up your mind that i will be so valuable so valuable years ago when i was teaching this series i got to meet a gentleman who used to work then in kaduna state his minimum salary was 500,000. He was working three times a week and he was working in three places. He was an IT consultant. They would fly him in from Lagos to Kaduna every week without fail. He was so valuable for many years. They pleaded with him to train a few people, but he did and the guys were not understanding it. And the boss said, no matter what, I will keep you. You are valuable. Oh, I'm not feeling fine. Can we get you a doctor? What do we need to do? Because the company is at the mercy of one man's value. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. May the grace for diligence come upon you. Listen, chasing after mediocre rewards will only frustrate you. 10 naira, 20 naira, 150. No, make up your mind that a time will come when kings will bless you and still say thank you. Listen, now I, I don't want to bring bad memories, forgive me. But when there was NSAS, there was something that happened. Palliatives were kept somewhere in a warehouse. Is that true? The warehouse did not have an address. The warehouse did not have publicity. It didn't have an osha, but there were bags of rice inside. Bags of Indomie, bags of sugar, bags of salt. And hunger drove people to navigate among all the buildings to find the one that had it and when they found it they tore that building into two look at the skills that were invented to jump those buildings what if you are that building what if you become that building a compendium of value the address was no longer difficult to locate nobody said ah the building is not very nice they look past it they knew let me tell you men will give every kind of excuse to find you when you are really valuable i know this you know you are valuable by who seeks you all men seeks for thee all men there are things when you have only your tribesmen will look for you there are things when you have only the rich will look for you there are things when you have only the poor will look for you there are things when you have only children will look for you there are things when you have only the educated will look for you but brothers and sisters there are things when you have all men all men all men pastor god when i made up my mind and i told myself
you write your exams, you mark it, you award yourself. No. Rank yourself by a global reference. Africa, thank God for this continent and I know God is helping us, but we must be careful. Because for many of us, where we come from, even at the point of failure, they start clapping for you. Our world is full of people who don't do much in ministry, demand applause whereas there are people changing nations and changing cities god brought you to church so that you will learn i spoke with um, a gentleman who is a personal photographer to the president of the federation and i remember when i was speaking with him before i would pray with him i said young man you are not from the north, you are not uh, Fulani, you are not Hausa. How did you get into the presidency? Because I hear he's one of the few people that can literally play with the president, like play. And I said, okay, this is interesting. How did that happen? Was it through a connection? And he said, no. I found out it was just value and grace. Value. Listen, if, I hope you are not angry. Leave that local champion mentality. Leave it. If the highest student in a class got, gets 20 over 100, he's still the highest, but did he pass? Many years ago, I was in secondary school and we had this debate, you know, this quiz and debate. And in our local environment, we seem to be the best. No matter what we did, we were still the best. Until we went to do a uh, I think a state or, or national competition. We knew we were joking. When we got there, the English of the student, you know, good schools, good school fees, the uniforms alone. <sighs> when we returned back for the first time, I was embarrassed being in that school. As young as I was, I started going to the state library. The state library. I said, no, even though I'm from this background, I reject, I, I will not receive the prophecy that comes with this background. Don't give me the excuse and say, I came from this. I didn't have the opportunity to go. No, kill that excuse today. In the name of Jesus, I want you to leave this service with an anger, a determination. God is calling me to the oil and gas sector. The key is not to roam around NMPC, leave them alone. Go back and do your homework don't pamper yourself even when you cry burn the candles wake up in the night when others are sleeping you're a man of god it's not the time to sleep it's too early uh -uh. stay until you get something that is of substance open your bible and study when they are sleeping pray cry before your maker god bring something upon my life you are praying that if anybody ever gives me his mic to stand upon his pulpit, he won't be waiting for me to go down and then warn the executives and say, don't ever bring this man to this church again. No. Money is a receipt. Money is proof. Listen, when you buy a product, you only receive a receipt when it is being paid for. Money is a receipt that you have paid the price. When you have paid the price, the receipt comes to you. We have to pray. Please rise up on your feet. Our service time is on. I apologize for taking a few minutes. But let's just steal two minutes out and pray. Listen. I don't know why God brought you here, but after me will come many great speakers, your pastor inclusive, and they are going to be sharing with you very serious things. I wish we had the time to deal with other issues, but this is already sufficient foundation for you. It is on the strength of this. Business is simply a channel that gives your value expression. Listen to me. It is not just about business. Business is simply a channel. When you package your value, listen carefully, you package your value and you serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base. That is business. That's all business is. 
business is not a shop it's not oil and gas it's not real estate it's simply the art of packaging your value serving it with excellence to a targeted consumer base the most important thing is not the building is you are we ready to pray father i make a covenant with my destiny that i will never be mediocre i make up my mind that i will contend for transformation i make up my mind that i will be exceptionally valuable exceptionally valuable as a man of god as a business person as a lecturer as a career person is someone praying let the days of shame and reproach that comes through incompetence and amateurism be out of my life i embrace competence master your field master your field in ministry master your field in business spend time buy books buy your pastor's materials spend time listen and listen again listen and listen again listen and listen again pray whilst you do so hallelujah praise the lord this is my final session i want to speak over your life you don't have to kneel please stand after teaching all of the principles there are others there are three supporting principles to the law of value hallelujah it's called the law of productivity productivity is turning your value into products and services that are needed and useful then serving them with excellence the third law i wanted to talk about is called the law of increase and there are three supporting laws there one of it is called the law of exchange your pastor alongside other people will teach you they will teach you multiple streams of income they will teach you the laws of investment they will teach you financial management because management is the key to increase every time there is no management increase is withheld increase is proof that there is effective management but then there is a prophetic dimension to wealth and sad for the time but i want to just speak this i sincerely apologize i am sorry and i apologize to you but i have to tell you this because we are people of the kingdom when we have an advantage so when we journey through these business angles now just prophesying and speaking to people without teaching them these fundamentals will only destroy them and produce lazy people who move around and say i have an anointing for prosperity and yet they are not valuable but then in addition to all of these laws let me give you a story it was not always like this for me i shared with you my story once upon a time we went for a crusade and we could not pay the sound people 150,000. I was about to be taken to the cell. Not because I was a bad person. I preached the gospel. People were healed. But I could not afford to pay 150,000. Someone came and wrote me a check of 80,000. And I gave the person. They went to the bank and it bounced. They came back together with security people. They came down. They said, no, you, you want to deceive? I said, no, I'm a sincere person. That was when I found out that being anointed and just being sincere is not the seed to prosperity. How could a man be so anointed? Deaf ears were opening. Blind eyes were opening. People were healed. And 150,000. It was a while ago, but it was still a serious thing. I pleaded with them. And then I saw a scripture. Genesis 42 and verse 1 and 2. And Jacob told his sons, he said, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. 
he said get the theater and buy for us so that we may eat and not die even a prophet will die when there is no corn the bible says proverbs 22 verse 1 and then verse 7 it says the rich and the poor meet together it says the lord is a maker of them all he never said the lord made them so the lord made them all and then when you get to verse 7 there is a fearful and instructive scripture there the rich anybody will rule over the poor anybody the rich unbeliever will rule over the poor prayer warrior and the borrower will remain a servant to the lender and i said minus me listen to me there is a prophetic dimension to wealth i assure you there is wealth by prophecy he says believe in the lord your god so shall you be established believe in his prophets there is a real grace for wealth and prosperity i began to search for men and women with that grace because i was tired of the situations in my life it never tires me to give my story sir i bought sugar cane for two women in joss and they blessed me i just wanted to bless them because they were elderly people I said, no, I was trained well. I can't allow my mothers to come here. And I pleaded with them. I said, please let me pay. It was just about 100 Naira. And they turned and began to bless me. And one of them looked at me and said, my son forever walk upon gold. The Lord gave me an instruction that one day he was going to send me to go and meet God's servant, Bishop David Oedeku. And on that morning, I woke up and he said, today is the day. I carried a seed, I will not tell you. But that one is not Ishmael, that's Isaac. When you give it, you can drive Ishmael without thinking about it. But the day you give Isaac, you will know. Precious seeds. When I went down to Canaan land, did what the Lord instructed me to do. When I came out, the Holy Spirit told me, he said, put your hand on the ground. I laid my hands on the ground and he said, from today you have entered the overflow anointing. I was in Port Harcourt in 2007. It was a prosperity convention like this. Please listen carefully. And after the first day, it was Reverend Eddie Owase that was brought to come and preach. Evangelist. When he was done, by the next day, the Holy Ghost gave me an instruction. He said to give everything. How many things did I have? Gathered everything plus my recharge card and locked it in the bag that if I give you, you will not even collect. I prayed in tongues for three hours there because I was tired. Most of you are not yet tired of your situation. Sincerely, I'm telling you. I dragged that thing. I was outside. Like many are outside now. It was an overflow. And when they finished the meeting, people came, gave lands, gave cars, gave houses. And I wanted to come out and drop my seed and the Holy Ghost decided to embarrass me. He said, remain there first. When everybody finished giving theirs, he said, now you can go. I held my bag like I was going for a funeral. And I dragged that bag there. People were looking at me. When you are serious about change, you will not care who is looking at you. Or who is not looking at you when i came i dropped that bag something in me died with that bag because it was everything i had i went back outside and i sat down and god is my witness i had the voice of god and he said my son you have entered into wealth by the next day 6 10 exactly in the morning somebody calls me shaking under the anointing who is this and he said, are you Joshua Selman? I said, yes. He said, send me your account. I said, no, all these scammers, no way. How much do I have there? You want to now frustrate me. And he said, no. God gave me an instruction. I could not believe what he said. Who are you? He said, it doesn't matter. I was instructed. The rest is history. Listen. I want to challenge you 
it is not my culture and you cannot imagine how difficult it is for me here but let me tell you this if i just tell you share the grace and go home i lied to you listen to what i'm telling you i lied to you i'm going to challenge you there has to be the release of a seed and a sacrifice if you don't believe what i'm telling you no problem no we are people of integrity you can go home the way you want but i'm telling you what i did and what i know happens in scripture he offered a thousand bond offering that night and not an angel came god he said what should i do for you and he said god give me an understanding heart he said you are wise listen there are times where we've had to shift things I wish the body of Christ were matured enough to allow us share some testimonies. But sometimes when you want to say it, you just remember what can happen and it's better to just give God glory and continue. But honestly, my brothers and my sisters, listen to me. I know what it means to move from grace. Which one is first? Grass to grace. And someone is here, you are standing. You are not standing for yourself alone here at this house the lord is giving you an instruction i'm going to ask as many of you who the lord is speaking to and saying it's a new season for you that there is a sacrificial seed don't do anything emotional and then come and put yourself in trouble no let every man give us his purpose in his heart but there are times that you cast even your bread upon the waters bread is for eating but there are times you cast even the bread the bible assures you that after many days you will find it, it says give a portion to seven and even here to eight you do not know the disaster that will come upon the earth i live my life and it's a life of sacrifice i know what god can do it will not always return as money it can return as relationships in this kingdom who likes you matters so someone can look at you and vow no strings attached that for as long as I'm alive, as God lifts me, he will lift you. Now, I don't know if you have the seed here or you are making a commitment. But if your pastor would allow me, I want to challenge you. Please don't tell lies you are before Jesus Christ. Many people come like this emotionally and then they go back. They don't. I want to pray for people here who are trusting God and say, I want to use a sacrifice as a weapon. To get out of this realm of hardship with revelation i'll pray for everybody i'm not going to give you any amount it's you and god but it is something you know that you are ready to get out of it wherever you are i want you to come and stand here in one minute i want to pray for you please don't don't waylay the man of god and his wife and then if here is filled you can still just stand in the aisles as you are here, please pray. Please pray. Don't waste your time. You came to church. Our time is already up. But God wants to change our lives. I want you to stand here with revelation. Some of you are in business and the business has refused to move. You have done all you know to do and it has refused to move. Some of you are here and it looks like certain realms. You cannot break out of certain financial realms. You keep recycling around that realm. God has sent me here with a grace in partnership with your pastor. Pastor, may I please request, is it alright if I request that you just come here with me? You remind me of the sacrifice I made. I remember. It was a conference with several people. Nobody saw me, but I was determined by God's grace that I would get out of this nonsense once and for all. Today, I give God glory for that decision. I want to pray for you. And when I pray for you, for those of you who have whatever seed you are sowing, you can bring it and come and drop it before the altar here. 
for those of you who need to make transfer is between you and god nobody brought you here by force and so make sure that you do not um i don't know what system is going to be but please i want you to mean it some of you god may be directing you to bring seats directly to your man of god don't be afraid you are still in place i know that this is a man that god has shown mercy i know that this is a man god has shown help and i want to pray for you father we are those you have shown mercy and you have shown grace here at this assembly and at this prosperity conference lord i know you are about to shift our lives you do not scam you are not a fraud star you are the god of heaven and in the name of jesus the christ of god i stand in faith and in agreement with pastor godwin over these people who have come out in the name of jesus i declare the two lift gate that must be open for the next season of your life financially we speak to those gates a fata be open a fata be open in the name of jesus i place an unction upon your life hear me i decree and declare carry grace from today grace that compels the ministry of destiny help us everything that represents financial hardship of all sorts cycles of failure just when you are about to rise something happens and brings you down i call upon my god who is the god of your pastor to arise and by prophecy we shift you enter a new season enter a new dimension even financially it says my horn hast thou exalted my head like the horn of a unicorn and you have anointed me with fresh oil thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runs over i want to pray for you in the name of jesus the grace that compels creation to listen to you the grace that compels a territory to yield its increase to you i declare may that grace rest upon you now every dying business here hear the word of the lord we speak to you by the spirit of resurrection come back to life now hear me there are many of you who are very valuable but you do not have visibility no one has seen what you represent to honor you it's one thing to be gifted acts chapter 12 says that when they bound peter prayers were offered by the church and an angel came the bible says the first gate opened the second gate opened and then they came to the iron gate that leads to the city there is a gate that when it opens all you see is the city it's a gate for influence i want to pray for you just because you are out of prison does not mean the city has seen you there are many anointed people many gifted people but the grace for visibility is not yet there i pray for you standing in partnership with the grace upon your pastor in the name of jesus christ receive the grace for visibility receive the grace for visibility the same grace that made the animals to come to the ark of noah without him looking for them two by two seven by seven they came in in concert and entered the ark may that grace call your destiny help us in the name of jesus christ wherever they are across this nation wherever they are across this city wherever they are around the world we compel that you enjoy their ministry and the financial level you currently are now you are so in at that level may you never go down past that level in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ for those of you who have your seat please come and drop it your pastor will speak over it those of you who are maybe writing i don't know how we do it is there a okay for those following online i know there are some of you connecting to this service and now i know that you want to sow you want to give please make sure that you you just just lay it at the altar here do it orderly and then you can go back to your seat 
and then for those who need to make transfers for some of you here the lord might be leading you to sow specific seeds into the life of your man of god and his wife don't fight it it's an instruction by god and if god gives you that instruction whatever it is that he says to do i want you to do it with understanding praise the name of the lord i want you to do it with understanding and ensure that you sow let your sacrifice speak in the name that is above all names if i were you whether i came out or not i will make sure that at least something leaves me to come down here i will make sure that something leaves me for the sake of his majesty for the sake of the kingdom in the name of jesus christ pastor thank you it truly is an honor to have shared the word of god with your people and i love you i love this church and the lord bless you the lord increase you let me encourage you finally please pay attention to all the other speakers coming almost every one of them are people who god has helped in different ways you must obtain the grace to listen go and get your pastor's materials especially as it concerns finances and stay with it this morning service is not all that there is you have to listen again and again for growth and for transformation the lord increase you the lord bless you in jesus name wow Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.